Welcome back everyone, I'm Dr. Rhett Smith for ProtonGuru.com and here we're wrapping up our discussion of NMR spectrometry with Lesson 7.7. .7. In our last lesson we talked about carbon-13 NMR spectrometry and here I want to focus on proton nuclear magnetic resonance spectrometry. And I want to talk about the different parts of the spectrum. We saw an example of a proton NMR spectrum in our discussion of Lesson 7.5. So here I just want to tell you about each part of the spectrum. Remember that we have the chemical shift. This is the x-axis value. We talked about how this relates to the electron density near the proton because a change in electron density changes the magnetic field experienced by the nuclei in most cases. Then we have the integration, this little number that's printed above the peak in a lot of simple spectra. This tells you the relative number of nuclei that give each signal. You have to have some caution when looking at these. In simple spectra, especially for courses at the introductory level, often you just see the actual number of protons responsible for a peak printed above the signal. But if you take real spectra and you're doing lab work, the real spectra can even have fractional values because again, remember, like we talked about, the spectrometer just gives you a ratio of the areas under the different peaks. Next we have the multiplicity. Remember that's just the number of signals into which your resonance is split in response to protons on adjacent carbons. And we talked about the fact that the multiplicity is equal to the number of H's on neighboring carbons plus one. And we stress here that it's the number of hydrogens on neighboring carbons. Protons on neighbor heteroatoms split your signal, but so slightly that that splitting can usually not be seen. For example, if you're trying to figure out the observed multiplicity for the H's here in the square, you wouldn't count this H as a neighbor but you would count these three H's as neighbors to see what multiplicity you would observe in a typical spectrum. So we have three H's here on this neighboring site. So the multiplicity of the signal you would see for this set of protons would be three plus one is four. So the peak for that set of H's would look like this and the integration might be two because you have two H's that give you that signal. As we did for the carbon-13 NMR spectra, I want to show you just a little chart that gives you a general idea of where protons show up in a nuclear magnetic spectrum. And once again, we use tetramethylsilane, or TMS, as our standard. It gives us a peak at zero. And again, the alkyl groups tend to show up at the low end of the chemical shift, usually less than one and a half. If you start to think about protons that are adjacent to sp, or H's that are adjacent to a carbonyl, you start to get a little bit higher. If you have a CH3 adjacent to a benzene or adjacent to an alkyne, so these H's that are shown are what we're talking about in all these cases, it starts to move to higher and higher numbers. Now if you attach the carbon with the protons directly to an electronegative atom, you pull the signal all the way up to 3.3. If the H is attached directly to an sp2 hybridized carbon, you start to be pulled into the 4s and 5s, if you stick electronegative atoms, X, adjacent to the carbon where the proton in question is attached, somewhere between two and a half and four and a half. Now if the H is attached directly to the benzene ring, this is very easy to pick out in a spectrum. Those show up between six and a half and eight. And then if you have a proton right attached to this carbon and this aldehyde, for example, you start to see very high chemical shifts, maybe around 10. So we can start to think conceptually about dividing up our spectrum in, and again we have tetramethylsilane, so that should be a four. And we have alkyl groups at the low end again. If we start to have the H near electronegative atoms or adjacent to sp hybridized carbons, we start to get a little higher. If the H is on the same carbon as an electronegative atom Z, it starts to get higher. If you stick two electronegative atoms adjacent to the H, or three, of course, you keep moving to higher and higher chemical shift. And we tend to have alkenes and then benzene rings showing up in these regions of the spectrum. And the very high end of the chemical shifts would be attributable to something like an aldehyde or a carboxylic acid. And if you start to develop a working knowledge of generally where these peaks should show up in the spectrum, and if you can look at a multiplicity and say, multiplicity minus one gives me the number of H's on the adjacent carbon, if you can look at the integration, see how many H's give you the signal. These are the pieces of information we're going to work with in our problem-solving videos at the end of this lesson to illustrate how you use all these little pieces of knowledge 
to look at a proton NMR spectrum and deduce what structure might have given that spectrum.